Okay. So whenever you're ready. Oh, um, you disabled screen share. <laughs> Sorry, I'll fix that. No issues. Okay, now you should be able to. Okay. There we go. All right, um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Ted Lee. So today I'm here to present um, some of our recent research works in our lab. Um, this work was mainly conducted by um, my fellow lab mate, Brendan Hellman, um, and also myself. And we also have had a visiting professor, Jing Hyun Park, and my PI, Yuzuru Takashimo. So basically, um, this work is mainly about the Gigapixel 1044 1, perspective display. And we're you're achieving this by using a sub-megapixel DMD. So, ooh. so nowadays, display resolution is a huge thing. So here we can see um, we started off um, not too long ago from full HD, even down to standard, standard <clears throat> display resolutions all the way now we're talking about 8k so 8k is around 33 megapixels but today what what possibilities could we have if we could scale this a thousand times so basically going up to the gigapixel range so for some examples um to have a few full human perception like non-phobiated in one single picture we would need around 75 megapixels which is not too bad it's probably doable in the near future but for even more pixels. Um, so suppose we want an MRI of the human body, a full 3D high-res MRI of the human body. We need around 520 megapixels. And now if we wanted to image all the neurons on the human brain, which has a lot and a lot of elements as predicted, we would need around 86 gigapixels. And then if we wanted to image um, our integrated circuits that we use nowadays, around the 20 nanometer features, we would need 1.6 terapixels. So it, it's really, so you can see now, Resolution is a really important thing. And the more pixels we have, the more flexibility you have, and we can have to do more a lot of things. That's basically our main goal, that we want to increase the pixel count without giving up other stuff in the system. So another thing that where pixel count matters a lot is in the AR VR system, which is the next big highest thing currently. So in an AR VR system, what we want, what we're trying to aim for is first of all, the whole system package has to be small. You can't have you can't wear a big mask across your whole face if you're going to do, especially in AR applications where we still need to interact with the real world. So, and also another cool thing is that in order to create, um, there's a technique called super multi-view, which is basically we simulate um, our picture at different focal lengths. So this is actually simulated in 3D software, like a phobia, like a phobia picture where um, if we were if we were looking at this picture from different distances, and if we use people steering and stack all those people together, basically we create like a, a fake focal plane image inside the whole system. And then by different focal lengths here, so this is basically simulated by looking through a digital camera, but like in real person, if you look and you, your eye accommodates for the different focal planes, you'll see that it gives us this defocus effect at different planes, which gives us like a real 3D experience. So this, but in order to do this, we need, so each picture would have the same resolution. So in theory, we need at the same pupil, 10 times, 100 times the pixel resolution. So this is where our system really shines. So we basically have a lot of pixels that we can dispose of. So a quick topic about common display technologies. So the main thing, especially in AR, VR stuff, is that we are aiming for the, <clears throat> excuse me, we're aiming for the space bandwidth product for different DMDs and different display technologies. So commonly used in AR, VR is that, um, for example, the I believe the Google Glass uses the OLED. And then we had, we also seen some LCOS based systems that popped up. And then for our research, mainly we're focusing on DMD, which is basically a micro mirror device that we'll go into more. So the main 
takeaway of all these devices is that we're limited by the space bandwidth product, which is basically limited by the pixel size. So the smaller pixel size, we have more space bandwidth product, and that has to do with Aton do and a lot of photon efficiency calculations that I won't go into a lot, but there are definitely papers that I'll list later in the references that you guys can go and take a look. But basically, the smaller the pixel size, the better angle resolution we get and the big and the higher space bandwidth product we get so that we can get a big, basically a bigger and more clear image. So the DMD that are lab main, mainly focus are interested in is a really fascinating device because basically it has it's commonly used in projectors so like cinema projectors and even some home projectors high-end home projectors and basically it's a it's a it's a electronically activated mechanical device so it's a lot of small aluminum mirrors on one substrate that each single mirror is addressable and in a typical scenario they usually use the mirrors to turn it on and off pixels. So the mirrors go one side, so like an on state to an off state, um, and they have plus or minus 12 degrees of rotation. Now, usually they're only used within to these two states, so on and off. And, and like I said, the pixels aren't, aren't huge, so they're around 10 microns, but um, in current days, 10, a 10 micron pixel is actually not wonderful. So we're looking down, we're starting to look down to like seven microns, even five micron pixels currently. Now the issue with this, you would think, well, now you only have two states. How can we get lots and lots of different views, lots and lots of different pixels? So our lab came up with an ingenious idea. Well, the mirrors have to transition from one state to the other state. So if we can somehow capture the mirrors in between those transitions, we can do some crazy stuff with it. So that's what we did. So basically what we did is we thought, well, the mirrors, they look like a blaze grating, a common grating that we see in a lot of optics stuff. So it's basically a lot of small mirrors all at the same angle. So it's basically a base grating. So if we could somehow capture the mirrors midway, suppose like half the transition would be around six degrees, then by the blaze grating condition, we can see, oh, so we can actually get a lot of orders, but somehow we need to like freeze the mirrors in time so we can use that. So we did that. We do that by using a synchronized laser source that sends around nanosecond pulses. So basically at that pulse point, the for the laser, the illumination source, the DMD looks like a blaze grating. And that way we can get a lot, lots of multiple orders out from this blaze grating. To do that, we need we built a um, especially if we wanted to put it packaged in an AR VR system, to do that, I built a small system, a simple constant current driver that does this really odd source behavior. So basically you want a really low duty cycle. We do not need a really high power, high duty cycle. Um, constant current source to drive the laser, to drive the laser. So basically we need short pulses. So around 10 nanoseconds to 100 nanoseconds, we need a fairly high reputation rate to match the DMD, which is around 24 kilohertz, but we don't need that much of a duty cycle. So um, 24 kilohertz to, compared to like 10 nanoseconds, only around 1% of a duty cycle. And the main thing is that in order to time where the mirrors are, it needs to be have a non irregular um, reputation rate, meaning that our pulse signal has to be able to shift real time and has to be synchronized with all the other components of our system in order for it to work. And of course, because we're planning to put this in an AR VR system, it has to be, have a relatively small package size. It can't be too expensive. So we're, we can't do some really classy Q switched and high frequency stuff that we typically use for a pulse laser. And then another thing is that this, this source has to be, this source driver has to be very universal. So for example, if we're going to use it in a real display, basically we're going to need, at least need RGB, probably another white if we want to increase the peak brightness. So we, I designed it so that's tunable for a lot of off-the-shelf stuff, lasers and LED diodes. So a basic simple prototype driver is built here. So it's basically a textbook constant current driver with my with our own takeaways in it. So it has an in-channel mouse set. It has a trimmable limiting resistor that sets the main current, and then to decrease the impedance because basically and these high small pulse width setups, the main limiting factor is impedance at the laser diode and the traces. So we use big copter traces to solve that. And also we have a socket diode to prevent back feet. So that way that when the laser diode turns off, it doesn't destroy itself because that happens a lot. And that's a big thing in laser drivers. Um, I'll go into more detail into this um, in my upcoming SPIE AR VR talk if you're interested to come. So back to beam steering. So basically now we have a programmable blaze grating, which is really cool. So what we can do now is while the mirror transitions from negative 12 to 12, so degrees, so basically from an off state to an on state, you can say, we can see that the mirror phase profile changes, which basically gives us steering. So we can now, instead of the beam just going to 
negative 12 and 12 degrees, we can now direct most of the power from negative 12 degrees to 12 degrees to create, depending on the gradient equation to different orders. So here you can see it's, you can see this spot actually moves around. So we can, so this is done by pulsing the laser at two different, at different times. So with that, and plus some other optics and some time of flight measurements, we can now find an object. So basically a LIDAR. So we can now find, so we can see this object is actually moving in the 3D space in front of our system. And you can see, well, we wrote a small amount of screen and shows, oh, so this box is currently at these positions. So now this would be really useful in suppose autonomous cars. So we could scan a wide FOB relatively fast. We do not have any moving components. Well, it's quasi completely electrical. The mirrors themselves are moving, but they're small enough so that they're not like a big bulky, like spinning mirror that would have mechanical issues. So this is also something that our ASL someone could do. Now, in order to increase the orders, like we, like you just saw, we only have like around seven orders due to um, wavelength and the pixel size limitations. But what we could do is we could stack different sources and we offset them by a tiny angle. And basically now we interleave the different sources, diffraction orders, and now we, we get a lot of diffraction orders. So this is our first step of making. So basically, we in order to get gigapixel, we want a lot of perspectives in a small package with a small chip. So we need to repeat that chip across a really large pupil plane. So this is our first one of our first ideas. And then this was mainly done by Joshua Gris, and he's currently graduated, but he also we have also have a publication that goes into more details like how this is all set up and stuff. But basically the, the simple idea is we use some um, optical, we use the optical layout to our advantage and we insert multiple offset sources and we offset the diffraction orders and then we interleave them. So we now have lots and lots of different diffraction orders in this. The main issue with this is that, first of all, because we're using multi sources, it's really complex illumination scene because you have to make sure all the sources are coherent and then not coherent in a sense, but you have to make sure all the sources are collimated and then they're all different offset at a specific angle or else they'll, they'll start to get blurred together and we'll have lots of undesired effects. Also, this is limited in self scalability, meaning that um, you can only fit so many sources in a beam path. You probably would not be able to fit, uh, for example, 10 times 10. You probably wouldn't be able to fit 100 physical sources in the same beam path, just limited by the Eton doing how the optical setup is set up. So then we came up with another idea. Well, if we need lots of sources, then we could also do something else. So back to DMD. The DMD is a pixelated structure. It was designed to display pictures, meaning that not only that we can diff we can change the angle, so it's an angular, we can also spatially change where the light goes. So we could tell a DMD to, uh, out of these pixels, only flip the outside pixels or only flip the cross. And what this gives us is it gives us more finer control so we can start to do some really cool stuff like holographic-based beam steering. We can also do um, display actual pictures because we're only using the grading on some different pixels and we'll get different pictures, which you'll see later. So now to the main topic. So now how are we going to get that many perspectives out of this display. We, we apparently we can't put like um, 100 sources at the source plane. So we had Brandon came up with this ingenious idea as well. Well, we already have a DMD. Um, it was designed to turn on and off light in a sense. So why don't we just use it at the source? Like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. So now we, instead of using different sources at different angles, we now have still have different sources at different angles, but it's now concentrated on a small section. So now here we have four times four, so it's 16 different sources on a source plane. And then we use color illumination to project the source onto the second DMD, which is actually our beam steering DMD, which actually takes and copies this four point four by four pupil plane to end diffraction order. So when you have an output pupil array, that's across the whole view. And if we look at each single pupil, we get one image. So what we can do here is we can do 144 sources, each with a different perspective if we wanted to. So this basically is well, kind of like a holo hologram displays, because if you think about it, what does a hologram display mean? So like when I'm standing here, I'm viewing this display and the, and the person or girl next to me is viewing this display should see different perspectives. That's how we get a 3D image. So now we have 1,044 perspectives. So this is like, so this, now we can actually display lots of perspectives and have like a 3D image. And also this means that across this whole view, we actually have a 1,044 times display pixel increase. So the hence we, where that giggle pixel comes from. Although this small DMD only has around 0.8 megapixels times 1,000, around 1,500. Now we have a giggle pixel display. Now what we can do with this display is really cool. So, uh, so by that many 
displays and that many perspectives. So this is um, an artwork that um, an artist was kindly enough to let us use. So basically you could see now we can project this image at different angles and we can see an actual movement through the high quality, basically a hologram like effect. Now this is like an Android and then this is a tiger, which is also, I also think super cool. So this is basically just all of those perspectives stacked together and we can see the movement. So back to another thing that we talked about earlier, super multi-view. What this means basically, if we have control over where the small pupil, fine pupil steering is, we can basically steer all the pupils together within a, a real, compared to our eyes, four millimeter pupils size. We can, if we can stack and both be in multiple pupils on it and send different images to that pupil at different distances, well, baking different distances, and we have like this, this focus effect that we saw earlier. So, by doing that, now we have 1,044, 1,440 different perspectives. So we can do that. So here we can see we, this is actually one still image. So the image is not changing by time. It's all stacked together in one people. But if we focus the camera at negative, at negative 30 millimeters, we can see this, the front part and the back part is all blurred. The back is a little bit deep on focus, is mostly on focus, the front is blurred. And now if we change the focus, so we focus forward, this is what we expect. So the back is now blurred. So it's it has some the focus like effect, and the front is now sharp and crisp. So this basically um, is another. So instead of spreading it a, across a whole perspective, we can also put all these 100, 1,440 perspectives down into a small pupil and have like this multifocal effect. So we have a lot of flexibility of how we're going to manage all these different perspectives and such. So the main takeaways of this is we by using um, a blaze grading and a pulse source, we can now get 1.13 gigapixel output from a, a 0 0.8 megapixel DMD. So that means that effectively we're decreasing our pixel pitch from around 13 microns to 0.3 micron, which is, um, at least for current technology, 0.3 micron pixel size is unheard of on any display. So for example, what we can do is if we, if we want to design a 100 degree by 50 degree one arc minute resolution display, we would need if with three micron pixels, we would need around 6,000 times 3,000 pixels, which would equate to a, a display size of around 16 millimeters squared, which is relatively big for our current AR VR setups. But with this setup, because basically what we can do is we can use a physically smaller pixel count and time, time integrate across the whole view. Now with only 50 times 150 DMD pixels, which is roughly equates to only 1.4 square millimeters, which is a really small display and using a 10 by 20 source array and using 12 diffraction orders, we can achieve the same pixel density as this big, huge, hugely high resolution single display panel. So this is basically um, what our research lab has been doing lately. Um, I glossed over a lot of the details and a lot of the back underlying um, ideas and underlying equations and stuff like that. So if you feel free to contact me. Um, if you have any other questions, I'll happily answer them within my within what I can say. And big thanks to Brandon Hellman. Um, this slide is mostly his, and he helped a lot throughout the, the course. Um, mainly, he I believe he is, today's 26. So I believe on the next Monday, he's also presenting um, a more in-depth of this paper on the SPI AR VR MR meeting. If you happen to attend, feel free to drop by. He also will um, have more info on that. And these are some basics. So this main paper, from this QR code is um, this current paper, which is the ASM gigapixel display. But we also have um, using the same idea, but using a, in a multi-display setup. So, and then um, feel free to look into other publications from our lab. We have done lots of crazy things with this system and the possibilities are endless. Thank you so much. Thank you.